So today I just want to take a few minutes to talk about rates and how they apply to chemical reactions. So you know what the word rate means in the general sense. If you know the rate at which something is occurring, you know how fast it's happening or how fast something is moving. If your car is traveling 60 miles per hour, that is the rate at which you are traveling. So what you're really measuring is a change per unit time. So what we're measuring when we're talking about the rate of a chemical reaction is actually the change in the concentration of either reactants or products over the course of time. So for a simple reaction like reactant A forming product B, we can express the rate mathematically as minus the change in the concentration of A over the change in time, or the change of the concentration of B over the change in time. Now notice that there's a negative sign here. The reason for that is that the rate of any reaction is always expressed as a positive quantity, but the concentration of A, the reactant, will be decreasing over time, because as the reaction proceeds, A is used up. So if we look at some sample data for this reaction, you can see that as time progresses, A, the reactant, is consumed, so its concentration decreases, while B is produced, so its concentration increases. This will allow us to cal calculate the average rate of disappearance of A, or the average rate of appearance of B, over time. So to find the average rate of this reaction during the first 20 seconds, we simply take the change in the concentration of A over that period of time and divide it by how much time has elapsed. So we have 0.54 minus 1 over 20 minus 0. The negative sign in, is in there to indicate that the concentration of A is decreasing, but rate is always expressed as a positive value and we find that there's a rate for this reaction of 0 0.023 molarity per second. If we were to use the concentrations of B instead, in this case we would find that the rates come out to be exactly the same, and you can check that yourself. And you can also calculate the average rate for the second period of time. Notice that the rate does change. Rates of reactions are not constant because the concentrations are not constant. So as we learned on the first day of class, the higher the concentration of the reactant, the, higher, the faster the reaction tends to go. So as there is less and less A present over time, the reaction begins to slow down. So let's look at sample data for a different reaction. Here we have the reaction of C forming 2D. So if we look at the data that we're given, we see at 0, 10, and 20 seconds, we have concentrations recorded for both C and D. So we can calculate the rate of disappearance of C as well as the rate of appearance of D, just like we did on the previous slide. So you should pause the video here and give that a try on your own. So these are what you should have found for the rates of disappearance of C and the rate of appearance of D during both time periods, between 0 and 10 seconds and 10 and 20 seconds. And there are a couple of inf interesting things about what you should have found. So first notice that in this case, the rate of disappearance of C is not the same as the rate of appearance of D, like it was in the previous equation. The reason for that is the stoichiometry of this reaction. So one C molecule is breaking down to form two D molecules. So that means that for every one C we use up, two D are produced. So we're producing D twice as fast as we're consuming C. And that's exactly what we see in the rates. D is forming twice as fast, its rate is twice as large, as C is disappearing. You'll also notice that in this case, the rates are the same between 0 and 10 seconds as they are between 10 and 20. In the previous example, I said that rates tend to decrease over time because the concentration of the reactants is decreasing over time. But there are some reactions for which the rate doesn't change with concentration. We'll talk more about these in the days to come, but for now know that they exist. That sometimes the concentration doesn't matter, but usually it does. So you've now just calculated two different rates for a given period of time. So let's just think about between 0 seconds and 10 seconds. You calculated a rate for C and a rate for D. But if you're just asked, what is the rate of this reaction, how do you answer? There is only one answer to that question. Your car cannot be driving at two different speeds at once, and a reaction cannot be occurring at two different rates at once. And the fact is that when you're asked for the rate of a reaction, 
you really also have to take the stoichiometry into account. You need to look at the coefficients in the reaction. So for the rate of a reaction overall, what you're really looking for is the rate of disappearance of a reactant or rate of appearance of a product divided by its coefficient from the balanced reaction. So the next time I see you, we'll talk in a lot more detail about exactly how concentration affects rate mathematically, looking at experimental data and being able to calculate rates from that, as well as learning some other important information about reactions based on the experimental data. So stay safe in the storm.